Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Bind Us Together. I'm Pastor Peg Harvey Morose, the pastor of Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lewiston, Idaho, and the pastor of Genesee Lutheran Parish in Genesee, Idaho. We began Bind Us Together back in March 2020 when we were first on stay-at-home order as a way to remind us that we were not alone. God is always with us. God is always loving us. God will never abandon us. We are the body of Christ. We are connected through the communion of saints. We are not alone. So good morning. Morning, Mike. Good to see you there. So um, this is the, oh, what are you? Oh, something flying about. Um, uh, yesterday was the first Sunday in Lent. Um, we're going to uh, get to, as the week goes on, the uh, other readings uh, uh, for the second Sunday in Lent. But we're going to um, take a little trip through the covenant with Abraham uh, because on Sunday we will read from uh Genesis chapter 17, which is a covenantal uh, reading, uh, but I thought it might be fun to look at some of the other readings uh, that precede this um, and uh, to, to see how it changed, how it grew, um, where it started. So that's what we're doing uh, the beginning of this week. And so we are in Genesis, and we're starting at the very end of chapter 11 and um, going uh, into chapter, the beginning of chapter 12. And I'll explain why I did this uh, as we go along. So here is the reading. Abraham and Nahor took wives. They were brothers. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah and Ishka. Now Sarai was barren. She had no child. Terah, they're the father, took his son uh, Abram and his grandson Lot of Haran and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abraham's wife, and they went out together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of Terah were 205 years and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So <clears throat> this is not an official covenant, but this is the, the, the initial agreement uh, between uh, God, uh, Yahweh, and, uh, and Abram, later to become Abraham. And um, we're very familiar with that part in the beginning of chapter 12, but 
I think it's always important for us to read the little bit of chapter 11, the very end of chapter 11, because um, it tells something very important about who Abraham, Abram, was. And that is that Sarai was barren. She had no child. Now, in the society of the time, that meant, let me take a twig. In the society of that time, that meant she had zero um, value because she was not able to give Abram children. And they were older at that point. And so there, it was... She hadn't done it thus far, and it was uh, highly unlikely that she then would be able to give him children. So what's significant about this? She was still his wife, his one and only wife. And when he moved, he took her with him. That's huge. That's huge for women um, of this time. That it, it means that he loved her and that she was valued by him, uh, even though she was not valued by, would not have been valued by society. And a man would have had complete rights to put her aside with. Uh, no ramifications on him, but definitely ramifications on her. She would not be able to, to marry again. Uh, she would be left um, with no resources or anything. So uh, I, I think this is very interesting and something that we need to remember uh, about Abraham. And um uh, he does things later on uh, with Sarai. She was supposed to uh, have been a beautiful woman. And so um, she tra attracted great attention by the people around her, um, and the men around her. And uh, two times in the story of uh, Abraham and Sarah, uh, Abraham passes her off as his sister uh, because he's afraid that because she's so beautiful that uh, other men will kill him so that they can take her. So she ends up in the harem of a couple of kings uh, because of what Abraham does. So, you know, this is not perfect, but this particular Part of the story um, is makes me think kindly of of Abraham and um, Sarah Sarai at this point must have been an amazing woman uh, to uh, cause Abraham Abram at this time to not put her aside. Uh, Anyway, that's, to me, that, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. All right. So that's number one. And so, to me then, that uh, indicates uh, perhaps part of uh, the reasoning why Yahweh would reach out to uh, Abram it, it kind of speaks to his character, though there are things later on that do not speak well of his character, but this speaks to his character. Um, so maybe this is why Yahweh picked this guy. One of the uh, many reasons, no doubt, but this says something for the character of Abram and then the character of God that would choose someone of this character and choosing Sarai as well. 
because as we will find later on, the covenant that God makes is with Abram and Sarai, not Abram and anyone else. So interesting things to think about. All right, now the rest of this story uh, is pretty familiar to lots of us. This is where we go frequently when we begin the story of, um, of Abram and, and Sarai. Yahweh calls to Abraham, to Abram, to go to the what will become the promised land. So calling this, the Yahweh calls this person who doesn't live in the area, but is going to be moved to the area. So the call is to go and um, to go to this place and that God will make of Abram a great nation, it says, or God says. And that God will bless Abram and Sarai. <sighs> Sorry, Debbie. Uh, yes, there's internet and there's other technical issues. This is internet, obviously. Uh, good morning, Debbie. All right. So I've been watching the numbers going up and down, so... Uh, as far as what it is um, sending out. So apologies for that. But then the rest of this story um, is about the blessing. So God, uh, Yahweh, is blessing Abram. Um, but there's a a purpose to this. It's not just I picked you and I'm going to give you all of my stuff. But um, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So uh, this is a really important um, aspect of this that that Abram and Sarai are blessed not just to bless these people, these two individuals, but they are blessed to be a blessing. So um, when we talk about how we have been blessed in whatever way, that we need to see that uh, the blessings that we receive are not just for us but the the purpose of the blessings that we receive are so that we will be a blessing to others and significant also to this is that the blessing is not just for one little group but it's for all the families of the earth so um, the blessings that God sends out are not just for individuals, not just for a particular group, but for all the families of the earth. And so I go back again and again and again to uh, uh, John chapter 3, because uh, God so loved the world, the whole world, um, that God sent Jesus into the world. Um, not just a few people here and there. All right. So, Abram was not a bad guy. He, he cared for his wife, even though she, he technically could have put her aside. Um, he wouldn't do that. So, I think that's pretty awesome. And number two, um, blessed to be a blessing for all the families of the earth uh, 
not a particular group at a particular time. Even when God picks a particular group like the people of Israel, they were to be a shining beacon for the nations of the world. It was never just about one group of people or uh, one or two people like uh, Abram and, and Sarai. So there we go. All right, so the song today, because it fits in with not so much today, although it does, um, but uh, our, our coming readings for the rest of this week. You are mine. So we're going to do verse one and the refrain, even though when we normally sing this, we would not go from verse one to the refrain. We would go from verse one to verse two, but... That's what I'm doing because I can. <laughs> Here we go. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know. I am here. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you. All right. I love that song. I need to put a marker in there because we're going to be going back there the rest of the week. All right. Um, are there any prayer uh, concerns that we should lift up today? Of course, we want to continue to pray for um, the people of Texas. Uh, as they are recovering from uh, no electricity or still experiencing um, and water water is now a, a huge issue there and then of course um, uh, for COVID-19 uh, we give thanks for declining numbers and um, for the vaccine. But we continue to pray for uh, all who are infect infected, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Debbie, continued prayers for Mike and Cindy. Um, so he received his infusion treatment. She has not yet, but she's going to, I'm assuming. Okay, so COVID infusion, infusion treatment. Uh, for Liz, again, uh, Debbie says prayers for daughter's mother-in-law, Liz, should be released from skilled nursing facility in two weeks, trying to move her back to Colfax. Okay. All right. Well, if there's anything else, go ahead and type it in and I will um, bring it in 
at the end and um and i will i will pray then for us the lord be with you gracious and loving god we give you thanks for this time to come together in uh, to study your word and uh to pray together and we lift up the concerns of our hearts we pray for the people of texas who are still being impacted by the weather the collapse of the electrical system uh, lack of water and um, we pray that the problems will be fixed soon so that electricity and water will uh, begin to flow again uh, and that uh, as, as the issues that developed um, are investigated that a permanent solution uh, will uh, will be found so that this won't happen again. We give thanks for the lowering numbers of those infected with uh, COVID-19 and uh, for those who are dying, but there are still new infections every day. And so we pray for those who are infected, for their families as they try to stay healthy, as they take care of their loved ones, we pray for the families who have uh, lost loved ones, over uh, half a million now in our country uh, who have died of this disease. And we lift up those who will die this day. We give you thanks for the vaccine uh, that is being rolled out. And uh, we pray that it will be effective and uh, we will get a handle on this virus. We lift up Mike and Cindy as they are, uh, as they are uh, experiencing COVID-19. We give thanks that Mike had uh, infusion treatment and we pray that Cindy uh, will be able to soon and we pray for healing for them. We lift up Liz uh, who uh, should be released from the care facility soon. And uh, we pray that uh, that uh, Nicole and Sam will be able to return her to Colfax so that they can be there to help her. Lord, in all things, we turn to you, we trust in you. We give you thanks for all that you have given us. Most of all, we thank you for the gift of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, friends, I should say, I think I figured out what the problem with worship is, and it's not our internet, although the internet is not great, but uh, our Wi-Fi, I should say. I think it is Pastor Peg's microphone that was uh, going in and out. So uh, <laughs> we're going to try again next Sunday and see how, uh, if we can get this figured out. So my friends, remember, be kind, wash your hands, stay at home if you don't need to go out, remember your neighbors, share the good news, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.